Hey everyone, Rayo here, and welcome back to my series, Fractals Explained. If you're new to this series, Fractals Explained is a composition of in-depth fractal dungeon guides from the Tier 4 perspective. The focus of these guides is to give you insight on each and every mechanic for every single encounter inside a single fractal dungeon. I may mention a few speed tricks here and there, but overall these guides are not on how to speed clear. After watching one of these guides, you should have a strong foundational understanding of the core mechanics of a fractal as well as how to handle those mechanics properly. Today we'll be covering the Thalmanova Reactor Fractal. This is a pretty packed guide, so if you'd like to skip to a specific section of the video, check out the timestamps I've listed in the video description. Like most fractals, the Thalmanova Reactor has three main parts. 1. Defeat the Fire Shaman. 2. Disable the four colliders. And 3. Defeat the boss. There are also three achievements here. Thalmanova Reactor Fractal Stabilizer, which just requires you to complete the fractal. Great Heights. Complete the final boss without anyone falling off of the platform and Subject 6 Deep Sixer. Defeat Subject 6 after getting him to 19 stacks of overload. Upon entering the fractal, you will take the form of an inquest and be placed in a small room with a detonator. Interact with the detonator to blow down the wall and move up to the first event to kill the fire shaman. The portal behind the shaman will spawn adds throughout the fight which you can either destroy it or just wait until the shaman is dead as the portal will despawn along with him. Once you defeat the Shaman, you will move on to disabling the four colliders, Subject 6, the Dormitories, the Repulsor Lab, and the Cooling Chamber. First up is Subject 6. If a group were to struggle with any of the colliders in this fractal, it would be this one, so make sure to pay close attention here. This collider requires you to kill a Champion Ooze. The catch to this Ooze is that he spawns adds to heal him, as well as takes on a shield form that will cause him to deal massive damage if hit too many times while in this form. When you see the boss turn into a giant, squished Hershey's Kiss, he is in his shield form. Every time he's attacked during this phase will give him one stack of overload. If the boss reaches 20 stacks of overload, or gets attacked 20 times in this phase, then he will create an explosion in the room which will cause everyone to take fatal damage. In this phase, stop your auto attacks, pull off your ranger pets, and just avoid touching the boss and wait for the shield to go away. The other mechanic to watch out for here is the healing oozes. Every 5% HP the boss takes, he will spawn one or two blue oozes around the arena that will slowly start making their way over to subject 6. If they reach the boss, they will explode and heal him back up for 5% each. If your party is lacking decent damage, then kill the blue oozes to prevent him from healing. In tier 3 and tier 4, he will start to spawn a golden ooze at 75, 50, and 25% HP thresholds. These oozes have more HP, a break bar, and will heal the boss for 25% HP instead of just 5%. These are necessary to kill if you do not have enough damage as they can completely heal the boss back to 100%. The catch to the fight is this. If the boss spawns a golden ooze and he heals back up past the threshold that the golden ooze spawned at, you will have to redo that ooze. For example, if you get the boss to 75%, he will spawn a golden ooze and two blue oozes. If you leave the boss at 75% to kill the golden ooze, but one of the blue oozes heals the boss back to 80%, you will have to kill that same golden ooze again at 75% along with the two blue oozes. The easiest way to complete this fight is to just have one or two people on blue ooze control and everyone pile the golden ooze whenever it spawns. Although if your group has good damage, you can do the block and burn method, which requires letting the boss go into shield form once, and as soon as it finishes channeling the shield form, CC the boss and DPS him down to zero really quick. This method requires good damage as you need to down the boss before the healing oozes reach him. Once you complete the fight here, you can disable the collider by interacting with it, and you will see a cooling rod spawn. Pick this up and carry it with you as you will need it for the cooling chamber later on. The dormitory's room is simple. There are four scientists trapped in rooms that need to be rescued. Break the gate on each of the four rooms to free the scientists, and once they've all been freed, you can disable the collider, grab the cooling rod, and move on to the next collider. A couple pointers for this room. Prioritize rescuing Chip and Grisa from the back two dormitories, as these two scientists apply one stack of the destabilized debuff on the final boss. Each stack of this debuff causes the boss to take 5% more damage, so rescuing both of them will make the boss susceptible to 10% more damage from attacks. The first two rooms have a portal on the inside. In order to technically free the scientists here, you need to kill the portal, not the door. So make sure when you've busted down the door, you kill the portal, otherwise you won't earn credit for freeing them. And a fun fact about these first two scientists, although they seem like they're pointless, you'll see them run directly outside and hang out near the portal once they're freed. Once you disable all four of the colliders, this portal will become active and you can actually run through it. Running through it enough times will... I'll let you figure it out. 
When you reach the Repulsor Lab, you will see safety shields lining the hallway, and the numbers 1, 2, and 3 on your minimap. To disable the collider, you need to be in room 3, but in order to get inside, you need to disable the door by interacting with the button at 2, and in order to get past the door at 2 to access the button, you need to interact with the panel at 1. Sounds complicated, but just send one person to panel 1, one person to panel 2, and two people to panel 3. Interact with the panel at 1 to let your party member into room 2, and interact with the button at room 2 to let your last two party members into room 3. In room 3, you will have to deactivate the two panels in order to disable the collider. Once you do, pick up the cooling rod and move on to the last room. After completing the other three rooms, you should now have three cooling rods. The goal here is just to make it all the way to the back and interact with the two panels, but the collider for this room is blocked behind a heat room that will heavily reduce your movement speed and heavily damage anyone attempting to walk through it. The cooling rods are here to help you though. When you pick up a cooling rod, you will see a second skill on your ability bar. This negates any damage while walking through the heat room for its duration for anyone under the bubble, making it possible for you and your party members to gain some distance. The red buckets on the minimap are the cooling rod drop-off locations. Bringing a cooling rod to these locations and interacting with the wall will slot the cooling rod into the wall creating a permanent protective bubble, allowing you to heal up a bit before running to the next drop-off location. When you enter the heat room, you'll also notice that you get a skill 1. This unnamed skill will give you a stack of 5% movement speed, which stacks intensity and lasts for just a little under a second per stack. To gain a huge burst of movement speed, hold down your 1 key and let it continuously stack speed. Once you get to your max of about 7 to 8 stacks, run to the next drop off location with the next rod. Do the same thing for the final rod, and you'll be able to run directly into the final room, disable the final collider, and move on to the boss. Once you've disabled all 4 colliders, you will be able to move on to the Thalmanova Anomaly boss fight by interacting with the control panel that has a Solvari named Scarlet Briar standing in front of it. This is right next to where you initially fought the Fire Shaman. Once you do, you'll be teleported to the top of the Fractal, and you will see a boss standing idle in the center of the arena. A few notes about this boss. You cannot cross the wall around the boss. If you attempt to, it will knock you down, even if you have stability. He also has many attacks that make the platforms disappear. But you also have a special ability for this fight that prevents the floor under you from disappearing. The first thing to make mention of is your Hex Shield, which is your special ability. Throughout the fight, you will see platforms glow and eventually disappear. In short, this ability will recapture the panel you're standing on when used and will prevent it from becoming targeted while the shield is up. The key that Hex Shield is typically bound to is your Minus Key, also known as your Special Action Key. If you'd like to rebind it to something more accessible, then go to Settings, Control Options, Special Action. This is a very important skill for this fight, so make sure it's easily accessible. The Anomaly has a few key attacks. Binding Bolt. The anomaly will target onto one player, making any platform the player touches disappear. You can prevent the platform from disappearing through blocks and evades. Flux Bomb. One person will receive a bomb above their head, indicating that when it detonates, the platform the player is standing on, plus all of the platforms surrounding the player, will disappear. Cosmic Barrage. The anomaly will spin, unleashing many different electric orbs across the arena, procking agony for each hit received, as well as making the platform struck disappear. And lastly, Cosmic Instability. Starting at the 50% threshold, the boss will target people with Cosmic Instability, causing everyone to gain the Flux Bomb attack over a period of about 5 seconds. A quick note about the Flux Bomb attack from this boss is that it shouldn't be confused with the Mistlock Instability that spawns an electric field and pulses Agony plus conditions, as these are two separate mechanics. With that being said, it is possible for this fractal to have the Mistlock Instability Flux Bomb, which can make the boss fight a little bit more confusing. This is due to the Mistlock Instability and the boss mechanic both giving you the glowing bomb icon above your head. Although they look similar, treat the mechanic in the same way. Move away from your party so it either doesn't make the platforms disappear from under your party member's feet, or it doesn't drop an AoE on your party members. The main thing to remember here is not to panic. My first reaction when I started this fractal would be to run all over the place as soon as I got targeted with Binding Bolt or started making mass panels disappear, but this actually hurts my party more than it helps. The key is to move slowly. When targeted by the Binding Bolt, move one panel at a time. Each panel will glow about three times before disappearing, so let it glow twice, then move on to the next one. Doing this will cause only about three to five panels to disappear for the duration of the attack depending on how fast you moved. 
Alternatively, if you constantly try to outrun the beam, you will make 10 to 15 panels disappear, making more of the arena disappear, which then makes it harder on your party to find a safe area. Apply this rule when targeted by cosmic instability as well, and try to stick close to your teammates when this attack is up, because if you and your teammates target the same panels, then that's less of the arena that disappears. Also note that you can jump from one platform to another. This is helpful to know when Hex Shield is on cooldown and the only safe platform is a small jump away. Lastly, if you're in a situation where there's literally no way out, this is when you pop your Hex Shield to reclaim the platform you are standing on. This should allow enough time for at least one panel around you to pop back up for you to either move or jump to. Keep all of these mechanics in mind, break is borrow when possible for a break from mechanics and a small DPS increase, and once you hit them down to zero, then congratulations, you've completed the Thalmanova Reactor Fractal on Tier 4. And that's all there is to it. I hope this guide could give you a clear understanding of the core mechanics of the Thalmanova Reactor Fractal. This fractal can be a bit of a headache to run efficiently as there's a lot to it, but just keep your cool when fighting Subject 6 and the final boss. Understanding how they work will get you clearing this fractal frequently. If you want to keep up with more in-depth guides like this, make sure to check out my video series Fractals Explained. The link to this playlist is in the video description. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, or even subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of any new video releases. I've also provided links to my Patreon and my affiliate links if you'd like to support this channel, and patrons receive some pretty neat benefits, so make sure to check it all out. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, I'm Rayo, and I'll see you in my next video.